The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. There's something truly new and truly wonderful about Kraft's new parquet margarine. New parquet now spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Join with your neighbors in making this great discovery. The minute you take new parquet from your refrigerator, it's ready to spread smoothly on the freshest bread. No tearing, no trouble. Kraft's new parquet margarine comes to you in a new ice blue package. Try a pound. You'll love the way it tastes. You'll love the way it spreads. Well, big fat snowflakes have been falling on Summerfield all night. And this morning, the great Gildersleeve is speculating about the number of frozen water pipes. But Leroy, like the rest of the youngsters, can hardly wait to get out and start building forts and snowmen. Hey, Unc, the snow's letting up. Oh, boy, the sun's breaking through. Yeah, look at the snow on the roofs and the trees. Regular fairyland, my boy. Yeah, keen. It's going to be rough on the water department. Wait until some customer turns on his faucet and gets ice cubes. <laughs> boy, I'm going to get out in it. See you later, Unc. Yeah, be sure you dress for it, Leroy. Put on your overshoes. Do I have to wear them? Of course. Why do you object to wearing them? Well, one reason is I can't find them. <laughs> Leroy, have you lost your new overshoes? No, I haven't lost them. They just aren't where I left them. <laughs> where did you leave them? Well, somewhere around the house. Or out in the garage. Or at school. <laughs> Don't ask me. But I won't let you go out and get your feet wet. You won't? That snow is six inches deep. Hey, I can wear my stilts. If I knew where to find them. <laughs> yes, yes. And where are your mittens? Say, if I had my mittens, I could walk on my hands. <laughs> Leroy, where are they? Gosh, I don't know. There, you see? Maybe I stuffed them in my overshoes. I bet that's what I did. I bet I stuffed them in my overshoes. Oh, my goodness. Leroy, you're taking this too lightly. You don't take care of your things. Well? Egg man. It's Mr. Cooley. Maybe I'd better go let him in. Hey, young man, you stay here and listen to what I have to say. I'm just trying to be polite to Mr. Cooley. Well, be polite to me and stay here. Mr. Cooley doesn't need an invitation to come in. Egg man! <laughs> You're always losing track of things. Yeah. Last week you came home from school without your lunch pail. I'm sorry. Egg man! I better let him in. His eggs might freeze. <laughs> Don't try to duck out. I haven't finished with you. Gosh. What happened to the fountain pen I gave you? What happened to it? Eggman. Oop. <laughs> we heard you, Mr. Cooley. I wasn't so sure. I thought maybe you were wearing your earmuffs in the house. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello. You know what's been snowing all night? Hello, Leroy. Hi. Why aren't you out in it, Leroy? Well, gosh. I've been making rabbit tracks all over town. An Eggman making rabbit tracks. <laughs> Well, I suppose so. But I want you to promise you'll start taking care of your things. Okay. Be a little more like me. Don't find your old uncle mislaying his things. Get yourself organized. Okay. I think I'll go out and start a snowman. Leroy been mislaying things? Yeah, I'll say he has. We had a hen who mislaid things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. You're not laughing, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm not in a laughing mood. I was always taught to have a place for everything and keep everything in its place. But my good example hasn't made much of an impression on Leroy. Hey, Unc. Yes? Where are the cufflinks I gave you for your birthday? Uh-oh. The cufflinks? Those big round ones with the purple glass. You never wear them. Well, they're beautiful cufflinks, Leroy. Yeah, but where are they? Where are they? Yeah, let me see. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're beginning to squirm. <laughs> Cooley. You don't know what you did with them, huh? Well, I had them up and... Naturally, I haven't looked for them recently, but... If you happen to run across them, why don't you give them back to me? Give them back to you? You don't wear them anyway. Hmm. Where are the cufflinks, Mr. Gildersleeve? 
Well, the last time I saw them. You don't know, do you? <laughs> oh, well, it isn't important. I often wondered if Leroy didn't give them to me just as a gag. I didn't know you could buy that much glass for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't take it too lightly, Mr. Gildersleeve. What's this? Leroy wouldn't say so, but I think he's hurt because you haven't been wearing them. It doesn't mean that much to Leroy. You never can tell. Some of us can hide a broken heart. What? I once presented my wife with a snood, which she never wore. A snood? Ladies' headwear. Oh. Very modern. I brought it all the way from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I was attending the dress poultry convention. <laughs> Cooley, I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. I have to go downtown. I have to go, too, after I finish telling you about the snood incident. Oh, my... Well, sir, the fact that Mrs. Cooley never wore the snood kept gnawing at me. Yes, yes. A man doesn't like to have his snood snubbed. <laughs> well, you've got a point there. I didn't realize how wide the rift was between my spouse and me until I found myself brooding in the hen house. Leroy isn't brooding. He walked out into the cold snow. Chances are he's unhappy as I was in the hen house. Cooley, stop it. Before you convince me, I'm in the doghouse. Well, I see Leroy's working on his snowman. I wonder if he is upset about those cufflinks. He hasn't even looked at me. Leroy... Oh, Leroy? Yeah? It's me, your old uncle. Yeah. <laughs> I see you're building a snowman. Yep. Can I help you? I don't need any help. Oh, well. I'm trying to make a better one than Piggy. Oh, I'm sure you will. If you want me to help, would you care to play in the snow for a while before I go to the office? No. Nah. Wouldn't you like to... Uh, throw a snowball at me? Gosh, Uncle, I'm busy. Every time it snows, Leroy, you always throw snowballs at me. Come on, it's fun. No, i got to get on with it. Well, all right. Goodbye. So long. Leroy. Yeah? If you care to change your mind, I make a good target. You're a sitting duck, but I'm just not interested. <laughs> <laughs> He's more interested in a cold snowman than he is in me. Oh, well. I've got to snap him out of this. Leroy? Yeah? Come on now. Be a good sport. Throw a snowball at me. Oh, for corn's sake, huh? Stubborn kid. Young man, I demand that you hit me with a snowball. Oh, cut it out, huh? Leroy, that's an order. Okay, okay. And don't just toss it. Put some steam behind it. Yeah, that's the way it is. <laughs> Was that a snowball or a baseball? <laughs> In the way Leroy threw that snowball, I know he's upset because I lost those winks. Well, perhaps Marjorie knows where they are. My George, my feet got cold out there. Oh, good morning, Anki. Come on in. Oh, thank you. You don't want to track in snow. You look like you've been rolling in it. Leroy hit me with a snowball. I think he's a little upset with me. Oh? I was after him this morning about mislaying his things. Couldn't find his mittens. He couldn't find his overshoes. Anki, where are your overshoes? Well, I couldn't find them. <laughs> There's the office. Yeah, I think. Marjorie, do you remember the big glass cufflinks Leroy gave me? <laughs> How could I forget them? He must have bought them because they look like marbles. Yeah, and they're beginning to look more like eight balls all the time, and I'm right behind them. Well, why, Anki? He gave them to me for my birthday. Well, I know, the same birthday I gave you a gold belt buckle with your initials on it. That's right. Say, what happened to that belt buckle? What happened to it? Why don't you wear it? Well... Where is it, Anki? I better think of something fast. Did you mislay that, too? Marjorie, not your silver belt buckle. Gold. It, 
Yes. Go. <laughs> Just wanted to see if you remembered. <laughs> you never wear it, do you? Well, I put on a little weight. <laughs> you can't wear a buckle on a belt if the belt won't reach the belt buckle. <laughs> Anki? Excuse me, Marjorie, I'm late. Someplace. <laughs> Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? How about a cup of hot chocolate? Yeah, well. It's a little chilly out. Yeah. But when winter sets in, I resort to a little psychology to keep me warm. You what's this? I get out the travel circulars and begin speculating on how it would be to go south. Oh? I guess I'm just a wild goose at heart. Now, you take this folder on Honolulu. Hey, that looks pretty good on a day like this. Yeah, I'm here to tell you. I'd like to be stretched out there in the warm sand, strumming a ukulele with the waves lapping at my tootsies. <laughs> yeah. uh, chances are you wouldn't be happy there, Peavy. You get as tired of the heat as you do of the cold. Well, if it got too warm, there's always some hula dancers to stir up a breeze. <laughs> Peavy. Mrs. Peavy and I saved up for a honeymoon in Honolulu. Yaka hula hickey doo la, yaka hula hickey doo. Oh my goodness! Plunkety plunk 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 plunk. Please, Peavy. <laughs> Quite a place, Mister Gildersleeve. Of course, we ended up at Niagara Falls. <laughs> December too. Peavy, you've forgotten about my hot chocolate. Oh my my, so I have. Hmm, here comes the judge, all bundled up. Yeah, an old goat in a sheepskin. Hello, Judge. Greetings, gentlemen. Yeah, hello, Judge. Here's your hot chocolate, Mr. Gilson. Anyone uh, forgetting a sled and sliding down Dugan's Hill with me? You, Judge? Yes, indeed. Cold weather does something to me. Me, too. It makes me stay inside. <laughs> well, you stay in the pharmacy with your hot water bottle. I'm the robust outdoorsy type. Yes, yes. Yelda, I drove past your house this morning and noticed Leroy building a big snowman. Yeah, that reminds me. Peavy, I'd better take Leroy a couple of candy bars. Yeah, well. You have to do something to get on the good side of him. What have you done now? Well, he gave me a pair of pretty awful-looking cufflinks for my birthday, and I laid them aside. Now I don't know where they are. And two candy bars ought to take care of that. The ten-cent size. Yeah. It's silly for Leroy to get upset over a little thing like this. Well, young people place great importance upon the little things. If a gift is slighted, they can be deeply offended. Leroy took it to heart, all right. Things of no consequence to us adults assume great magnitude to a child. Mm, I think so. A uh, birthday gift, you say, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, you remember the party I gave myself? I remember I gave the food for the party. If I recall, I presented you with a tie clasp at the same time. Yeah, that's right, Petey. <laughs> Never wear it, do you? <laughs> well. Gilda. I gave you a red muffler with tassels on it. Whatever happened to that? No, Judge. I think that muffler enlisted in the Salvation Army. <laughs> well, there's no better outfit to give to than the Salvation Army. I'll bet you never wore it, did you? <laughs> Judge, don't cross-examine me. And your birthday was the last time I saw my tie clasp. Phoebe, if I wore everything people gave me, I'd look like a dray horse. She does a little. Gosh. <laughs> 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 Oh, I heard that, Peavy. I must say, Gilda, that you're not very appreciative. Yeah, he's downright ungrateful. <laughs> now who's acting like a couple of kids? Just wait until you invite us to another birthday party. Yeah, he's got his last gift for me. Oh, Peavy, you know if I give another party, you'll come up with something. No, yeah, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I was having trouble with Leroy. Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Years ago, when Kraft began making parquet margarine, it quickly became one of America's table favorites. Now, today, there's a new parquet, a wonderfully improved parquet, and it has qualities no other spread has ever before been able to promise. The texture of new parquet is truly unique. 
Even though you serve it ice cold from your refrigerator, it slices into neat, perfect pats. Even when it's ice cold, it spreads smoothly, won't tear or break up the freshest slice of bread. And even when you leave new parquet standing out in a warm room, it won't slump down into a gooey mess. It keeps its shape so you're not ashamed to serve it at the table. And wonder of wonders, the new method that Kraft, and only Kraft, uses to make parquet actually improves the flavor of this wholesome, appetizing food. It's delightful on rolls and bread, steaming pancakes or crisp waffles, on baked potatoes and all the other hot vegetables your family likes best. Doesn't new parquet sound like the kind of table spread you'd like to serve every day at your house? Try it tomorrow. Pick up a pound of Kraft's delicious new parquet in the new ice blue package. A picture of a cake of ice on the front of the package will remind you that parquet is the margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Well, the great Gildersleeve found it necessary to give Leroy a little lecture about taking care of his possessions. But somehow, with the water commissioner, the shoe always gets on the other foot. Now he's trying to locate some cufflinks his nephew gave him. Marjorie, I've looked high and low. I've turned the house inside out, and I can't find those cufflinks. Well, I see you found the belt buckle I gave you. <laughs> Glad you noticed I'm wearing it, my dear. I found a tie clasp, too. Gift from Peavy. Well, it's a good thing. I was afraid you were setting a bad example for Leroy. You think so? Well, if you don't take care of your things, how do you expect Leroy to? No, my dear. Oh, excuse me, Auntie. I'll answer the door. Marge, you're getting just a little picky about this. Leroy! Hi, Marge. Why'd you ring the bell? I was locked out. Marge, you ought to see my snowman. I'll take a look on the way home, Leroy. Yeah, the boy seems to be in good spirits now. I'm going to pour some water on tonight so we'll freeze solid. Boy, what a snowman. Where's Unc? In the den. Come in, Leroy. He's forgotten all about the cufflinks. Huh? Yes, my boy. I'm making some snowman outside. Good. I want to see that. Hey, you got a new belt buckle? Well, not new. Where'd you get it? It was given to me. Yeah, huh? Who? Well, Marjorie. Just now? No. When? Well, my birthday. Oh, Hey, did you ever find the cufflinks I gave you? Zeke. <laughs> did you? No, Leroy, frankly, I didn't. Oh. Better take off this tie clasp and hide it. Oop, dropped it. I'll get it, Uncle. No, I'll get it. I got it. Oof. New tie clasp? No, no. Thank you, my boy. I've never seen it before. A little something from Petey. Why would he give you a tie clasp? My birthday, Leroy. Yeah? You couldn't find my cufflinks, huh? <laughs> I haven't given up, my boy. That's okay. Give up. What? I think I'll go out and work on my snowman some more. He doesn't even want to stay in the same house with me. <laughs> no doubt about it. I broke Leroy's heart when I lost those cufflinks. I'll just have to replace them, that's all. Peavy has a showcase of the corniest jewelry I've ever seen. I'll try him first. Doo-hoo! Get Who's that? Oh, the little old lady I met at the doctor's office. Well, hello, Mrs. Potter. I haven't seen you since you were in the clinic with a crick in your neck. <laughs> well, that was three weeks ago. But I remember you. I never forget an ailment. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, was the doctor successful in finding something else wrong with you? No, Mrs. Potter, just a crick in the neck. Oh, that's too bad. I was hoping you'd have better luck. Do you know I'm still taking pills? Well, congratulations. <laughs> Sonny, let me look at you. You what? I don't understand how you can feel all right. I noticed you walking along, and you looked so depressed. Well, I'm a little worried, I guess. Your liver? No, Leroy. I've never had that. What's it like? 
Leroy is my nephew. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to step into the drugstore here. Then you don't feel well. No, it isn't that, Mrs. Potter. You're not spoofing me, are you, Sonny? No, no. See you around. Keep bundled up in this cold. You don't look at all well. Goodbye, Mrs. Potter. Goodbye. I guess she's on her way to the doctor. She won't be happy until he finds something wrong with her. Or me. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gillespie. What can I do for you this time? Uh, Peavy, I can't find those cufflinks Leroy gave me. Let's see if you have any like them. Yeah, well. Incidentally, I guess you noticed I'm wearing your tie class. Yes, I did. Is that all you have to say? It's turning green. (laughs) Well, you should have bought me a better one. Never pays to buy cheap jewelry. Well, let's take a look at some expensive jewelry. No, Peavy. Let me get out my Christmas stock. Hmm. Here's a new tray. Peavy, I've seen most of this stuff before. This isn't new stock. I didn't say it was new stock. I said it was a new tray. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I've added a few items. Yeah, well, I'll take a look through them. Very well. Oh, excuse me. I'll wait on this lady. Yes, madam? Uh, I just want to see Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh-oh. What is it, Mrs. Potter? Well, I got down the street and I started worrying about you. Oh, thank you. But I assure you I'm quite all right. I can prove it by my druggist. Does he have a diploma? Do you, Sonny? Sonny, are you speaking to me, (laughs) ma'am? She means you, Peavy. Yes. Where is your diploma? It's right here on your wall. Oh, I see. My, that's pretty. Mm, Thank you. What's his name, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, excuse me. (laughs) Mrs. Potter, this is Mr. Peavy. How do you do, Mr. Peavy? Very well, thank you. I'm always happy to enlarge my circle of druggists. You never know when you'll need some medicines. (laughs) Okay. Do you mind if I browse around your pharmacy? Well, you go right ahead. I might find something I can take. I beg your pardon? (laughs) She means take orally, Peavy. Oh. Any luck with the cufflinks, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, not yet. Mr. Peavy? Yes, ma'am? What's in this beautiful green bottle? Well, that's a new uh, dietary supplement. How exciting. Yes, it is. Do you happen to have it in a blue bottle? Blue bottle? Well, I guess I could put it in a blue bottle. Then it'll match my medicine chest. I have a blue ruffle around me. <laughs> he's a friend of yours, you say, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, since you're a druggist, he's your friend, too. Yeah, let me see. Hey, Phoebe, here's some cufflinks almost identical to the ones Leroy gave me. Did they look like that? What did he have against you? <laughs> yeah, all right, Phoebe. Excuse me. Are those pills you're picking out? Cufflinks, ma'am. <laughs> I didn't have my glasses on, but they looked like the largest pills I've ever seen. <laughs> Such a soft purple. I'll take them, Peavy. Good. That'll be ten dollars. Ten dollars? We were only paid a dollar for the others. Yeah, and these are the real thing. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you do look pale. Well, I should. Peavy, here's your ten dollars. <laughs> Just wait until Leroy sees all this. Oh, hello, Unky. Oh, Marjorie, I didn't know you were here. I was just on my way home. What have you there? Uh Aha, let me show you. You found the cufflinks. At a price, yes. Now, don't tell me those were expensive. Marjorie, this glass is set in gold. Ten dollars worth. Oh, poor Unky. Well, it's worth it to make Leroy think I found the cufflinks he gave me. Say, let's hide the box. All right. What else did you get? Well, I can't use cufflinks with most of my old shirts, so I picked up a new one with French cuffs. See? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, that isn't all. Oh? I bought this purple knit tie because it matched the glass and the cufflinks. You went all out. Yeah. I wanted to show Leroy how much I think of his cufflinks. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. Hello, Leroy. Hi. What'd you buy, Unc? Oh, I bought a few things to go with your cufflinks. You found them? Here they are. 
Gee, they look better than when I gave them to you. Well, <laughs> it just shows how your old uncle takes care of things. <laughs> hey, a fancy shirt. Yeah, that goes along with the cufflinks. The purple tie, too. Oh, boy. You did all this just for me? Just for you, my boy. I can hardly believe it. Isn't Unky wonderful? Yeah, I'm going to have the classiest snowman in town. You're going to put that shirt and tie on your snowman? Sure, that's why I kept asking you for those purple cufflinks. They're going to be my snowman's eyes. Oh! <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Did you serve Kraft's new parquet today? If you didn't, you missed out on something good. Kraft's new parquet is the new margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Right from the refrigerator, new parquet glides over fresh bread without tearing it. Right from the refrigerator, new parquet spreads neatly on the thinnest crackers. Tomorrow, look for Kraft's new parquet in the ice blue package. It looks wonderful, tastes wonderful... And spread smoothly even when ice cold. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Cooley. What can I do for you today? When I was delivering eggs this morning to Mr. Gildersleeve, I saw those cufflinks he bought from you. You know what I'm saying? And I think they're beautiful. How's that? Very modern. I'd like to buy a pair for myself. Well, I'm afraid Mr. Gildersleeve bought the last pair. Oh, shucks. I'm sorry, Mr. Cooley. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. And Cooley. We were just talking about you. Oh? Peavy, I found those cufflinks Leroy gave me, so I'd like to return the ones I bought from you. You want to return them? Yeah, just give me my $10, Peavy. Did they cost that much? They're as good as new. They haven't been worn, you see? No, they haven't been worn by anybody, Peavy. Mr. Gildersleeve, what about the snowman? Snowman? Now, Cooley. Yeah, what about this snowman? <laughs> well? I was under the impression the snowman wore them last night. He did? Well, if they're used cufflinks. Peavy, a snowman isn't anybody. He is to another snowman. <laughs> <laughs> now, if he wore the cufflinks... Oh, I... for this is ridiculous. I think so, too. Trying to return used merchandise... I'd like to see me trying to sell used eggs. <laughs> All right, Cooley. I'm afraid I couldn't resell the cufflinks, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, they're no good to me. Mr. Gildersleeve, I have a proposition that might interest you. Oh? Fifty cents. For these gold and purple glass cufflinks? That's preposterous. Seventy-five cents? No. A dollar? I'll take it. <laughs> good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Earl Ross, Bud Steffen, Elizabeth Patterson, and Dick Legrand. Musical composition by Jack Neekin. This is John Easton saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What goes into a perfect sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard, Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft Prepared Mustard. Tonight, it's Groucho Marx and you...